Hey guys, how's it going? It's Thursday morning. I just woke up not long ago. I'm going to go through Galatians chapter 5 and uh, get my coffee again. It just doesn't seem right to do these without having coffee. So, <laughs> But anyways, yeah, I couldn't really say a whole lot in, in verse in chapter 3 and 4. Those are really the deeper theological parts of this. And I realize it's really needful to do an expository on Galatians. I've already started one on Philippians, but I think after I go through that, then I'll jump over to Galatians, because that needs to be done. And so, I think Galatians starts off kind of light, and it kind of ends lighter, but in the middle there, it's, it gets, you know, that's where the highly controversial stuff is. Anyways, Christ has set us free, verses 1 through 15. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Still in the context of the Jewish laws and traditions, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Okay. Um, so I guess he's saying to the Gentiles, you know, if you if you put yourself under that yoke of bondage and you get circumcised uh, to be as the Jews and you start to follow their laws and traditions, um, then Christ shall profit you nothing. Uh, basically, you've given up the liberty uh, in Christ. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And, uh, you know, these two verses, you know, like number four is one where people will teach that you can lose your salvation. You know, that's, that's one of their big ones. Um, Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. And, uh, you know, I would just say that, you know, it's speaking of apostasy and, and those those who seemingly believed in Christ but then seek to be, you know, made righteous by following the law. They never truly, they never truly had faith. They never truly were saved is what I would say. But it's definitely a verse that needs to be gone over more. That's probably one of the main ones that they would use. Uh, and then even for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. That that could be where someone could say that you know you haven't obtained righteous you know you don't obtain righteousness by you know like in a moment of believing in Christ. But. Um, No, that's not what it means either. You know, when it speaks of hope a lot in the scriptures, you know, it's a certainty. And, uh, you know, waiting. It could be, you know, waiting for, you know, the full reward when, when it's actually realized, you know, when we're glorified in heaven with Jesus. Not that we don't already have that. Because uh, there's other verses that speak of us, you know, already having salvation, already being saved, already being righteous in the eyes of God. Verse 6, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And so that's really interesting, too, that, you know, salvation is by faith because of the love of God. Um... You know, he loved us, sent his son to die for us in our place, and, uh, you know, if it was by works, then it would be us earning it, uh, you know, like God would owe us, but uh, God doesn't owe us anything, but because of his grace and because of his love, he has offered us salvation. Verse 7, ye did run well, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? And uh, and also in verse 6, you know, again, it says, neither circumcis no circumcision nor uncircumcision 
availeth anything, and that's just like he stated previously that you know there's no Jews or Gentiles in Christ. We're all one. We're all one. And uh, he said, "You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth?" Again, uh, <clears throat> it's just like when he said, "Who who hath bewitched you?" And this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. I guess he's speaking of Jesus again. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. That's the verse that a lot of people go to. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? <clears throat> then is the offense of the cross ceased. So if he was preaching, you know, that people needed to be circumcised and follow the, the laws and the traditions of the Jews, then <clears throat> the Jews wouldn't be persecuting him. And there's no offense of the cross. I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. And that's an interesting verse, too, when I was kind of looking over this. <clears throat> that I want to look into. What does he mean that I would that they were cut off which trouble you? No, uh, does he mean like if they're among you in the church that they be cast out of the church? Or is he saying that, you know, he wished that they couldn't be saved or they were cut off from salvation? I mean, I don't know. I want to look in and see what other commentators have to say about that. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty... Only use not liberty for occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So, uh, you know, we're not supposed to use our liberty to sin, but to love, to serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. So very good uh, commands there, just to love one another. That's what we're to do with the liberty in Christ. Keep in step with the Spirit, verses 16 through 26. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if you be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, simulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you at time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory provoking one another, envying one another. So I just kind of read read through that all, and, you know, there's a lot of lists of things here, lists of, you know, sins and uh, lists of virtues. And, you know, they're not uh, exclusive. Like, you know, there could be more added to the list. Uh, he's just rattling off, you know, what comes to his mind, all these things. And, um, You know, it talks about walking in the Spirit. If you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So, you know, we have a daily walk with Christ where we daily crucify the flesh. And, um, you know. So, yeah, if you are... 
I don't know. <laughs> I just uh, want to go more into the expository on that. So, went to daily walk in the spirit and focus on these virtues: love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Love one another, love thy neighbor as thyself. All right, so I'm going to end this and then get on to chapter six. God bless.